you wanted the best, you've got the best podcast. The hottest, hottest. podcast in the world. In the world. The Chris Voss Show, the preeminent podcast with guests so smart you may experience serious brain bleed. The CEOs, authors, thought leaders, visionaries, and motivators. Get ready, get ready. Strap yourself in. Keep your hands, arms, and legs inside the vehicle at all times because you're about to go on a monster education roller coaster with your brain. Now, here's your host, Chris Voss. Hi, folks. It's Voss here from thechrisvossshow.com. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Big Show. We certainly appreciate you guys tuning in. As always, we bring you the Chris Voss Show uh, from uh, three to four shows a weekday, 15 to 20 shows per week. Uh, We're always bringing you the most amazing content. For 15 years, we've been bringing you the CEOs, the White House advisors, the billionaires, the presidents, the governors, the U.S. congressmen, uh, Pulitzer Prize winners. I think I mentioned that before. All the brilliant people, and you join the elite crowd of the Chris Voss Show folks who listen to the Chris Voss Show and get what we call The Chris Voss Show Glow. We have these amazing authors that come on the show and bring you that condensed, juicy, bit version of the brilliant minds that they spent lifetimes putting into their books and everything else. We have an amazing gentleman today. Uh, We're going to be talking with Brandon Dawson uh, on his new book called Nine Figure Mindset. How to go from zero to over a hundred million dollars in net worth that just came out September 19th, 2023. In the meantime, please refer the show to your family, friends, and relatives. Go to goodreads.com, Fort says Chris Foss, LinkedIn.com, Fort says Chris Foss, the big 130,000 LinkedIn group, the LinkedIn newsletter, Facebook, uh, Chris Foss, Facebook.com, and of course, uh, all the other things. Uh, he is an amazing gentleman who's achieved quite a life of amazing things. Brandon Dawson is a scaling and turnaround expert, business leadership mentor, and serial entrepreneur whose mission is to help business owners, their families, and their teams achieve their personal, professional, and financial goals through the growth of their business. Brandon founded his first business at the age of 26 and was one of the youngest people to ring the bell on the American Stock Exchange. With zero debt and no outside capital, he founded and self-funded Audigy Group, ultimately growing annual revenue to over $35 million through organic growth. He exited the company at a 77 times EBITDA for $151 million. He has achieved numerous awards in business, and his companies have been recognized on the Inc. 500 and Inc.'s fastest, five, I'm sorry, fastest five, th- <laughs> I got too many F's in my mouth. 5,000 fastest growing companies listed five times. That's like a thing there uh, going on. Uh, what do they call those things? The, there's lots of Fs. Today, Brandon coaches Cardone's venture clients on how to use his proven leadership and business strategies as a foundation for strategic growth so they can follow in his footsteps and create their own legacies and maybe learn how to say long sentences that uh, use the word F a lot. Welcome to the show, Brandon. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me on your show. Thank you for coming. We certainly appreciate it, sir. Give us your dot coms. Where can people find you on the interwebs? Cardonventures.com. You can find me on grantcardone.com. Uh, you can find me on bdawson.com. You can find my book on ninefiguremindset.com. I am all over the dot coms. You got the dot coms down there. So give us a 30,000 f- overview, please, of nine figure mindset. Yeah, it really uh, breaks down my journey of the last 20 years and my first business in my 20s, you know, I was voted least likely to succeed coming out of high school as a 2.4 GPA, didn't go to college. And and by 29, I was ringing the opening bell of the American Stock Exchange with a Warburg Pincus private equity backed roll up strategy, buying hundreds of businesses and and doing all that before I was 29 years old. The problem was I had to restart when I was 32 years old, 33, because oh. they sold the business out from underneath me. And I was a little bitter and a little pissed. And I had some great mentors who really reshaped my thinking, gave me instruction on how to get my doing to follow my desires. And I just literally documented the whole journey of going from zero to $100 million net worth by building something that that we are expanding on today, teaching other people how to do exactly what I did. There you go. So give us an origin story, a hero's journey of uh, what, how did you grow up? What, what were some of your influences? And how did you first get that entrepreneurial bug? 
Yeah, great, great story. I cover this in my book, but I was in Corvallis, Oregon, going to high school, and I got grounded my junior year because I was after uh, I was working at the night deposit as a dishwasher, and I was sneaking over to my girlfriend's and getting home late. So my dad grounded me, and uh, and they were going out of town, and we had a walnut orchard, and every year we needed to pick five thousand dollars worth of walnuts for my brothers and I to go to this little private Christian school. Hmm. And they were going out of town and grounded me and said I had to pick up the walnuts. I went to school the next day, and it was my first entrepreneur experience. I saw a note on the lockers from the seniors saying they're doing a senior fun drive, trying to raise $1,000. And I thought to myself, if I could get them to come over and pick up the walnuts, give them the 1000 bucks, I could go spend time with my girlfriend's uh, girlfriend Sorry, before my parents get back into town. Yeah, I was I was 17. So. It's, it's amazing what men do for uh <laughs> anyhow uh they i thought a couple might come out but everyone came out they brought their parents their family we picked the walnut orchard clean mm -hmm. i didn't have to do any of the things i hated doing i ended up selling all the walnuts to their family members for more money i made up a price because i didn't even know how to calculate and uh and that was like forever on i'm like why would i ever do anything by myself when i can get other people to do it for me and so there that, you go. that's my been my mindset once you get that bug, that entrepreneurial bug, it's kind of like a virus or a disease. I don't know. Uh, a good disease? I don't know. It, it depends, I guess, on how it turns out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Once you get that bug, it, it's hard to get rid of it, um, and it's hard to get off of it. So uh, let's uh, talk a little bit about your personal journey uh, through success. Uh, let's delve into a little bit more. Um, you know, you you start your companies. Uh, what, what, what got you into the first big company that really uh, started making money and being successful for you? Well, the first business I started, so I was 26 years old, uh, between the ages. I, I moved from Oregon when I graduated high school to mm -hmm. Atlanta, and I became an outside sales rep for a device manufacturer. And I outsold uh, the the sales reps around the country because I just outworked them. And, and, and then I got an opportunity to move to Minneapolis. And in, uh, in, it was 1989 and I would have been, um, like 21 years old and my boss got fired. Uh, the director of us sales got fired within a year of me being there. So they came to me and said, Hey, run the sales team of 25 people. And, and while we look for the replacement and I created a program that did $26 million in revenue that next year. And so they just never replaced my boss. And by the age of 24, 25, they made me director of U.S. sales. And so at 26, I was sitting at the conference room table with a bunch of 50, 60 year old guys. And I had a commission plan that was going to pay me more than any of them were earning. And the owner said, I can't pay that to you because you're making more than any of my other executives. And that was my key indicator. It's time for me to move on and go do something different. Yeah. And so that was the launch of my first company, Sonus. Did you kind of feel like I need to control my, uh, my future or my yeah. experience? I need to control my income. When I was told I wasn't going to get the check I was supposed to get, I decided I wouldn't have somebody else control my money anymore. Yeah, no kidding, man. I mean that that's that's kind of I think uh, what a lot of entrepreneurs lead. Um, and uh, thanks, Leanne, for calling in. Who would have thought walnuts would have started it all? There's a good exactly <laughs> walnuts and a girl. <laughs> Maybe you should have put a big walnut on the cover of the book. I don't know. But you've done so much since then. So there you go. Uh, so in your book, you talk about mindset shifts for financial success. And you talk about the nine-figure mindset. Can you explain what this mindset entails and why it's crucial for financial success? Yeah, because, you know, you, you tend to – this is why my partner, Grant Cardone, uh, Mr. 10X, this is what's been so amazing about my partnership and relationship with him is – I experienced in a microcosm kind of what he talks about with the 10x rule. And, and I had some great mentors and they said, hey, it, you know, if you could build a business where your net worth is 25 million, you wouldn't have to work anymore. And, but if you got to 50 million, you'd have a pretty good life. You could get a couple extra houses at 75 million. You could get a jet at 125 million. You, and this was all in the late 90s, the people that were coaching me and mentoring me. Mm -hmm. So I, so I never forget when my when when one of my mentors said, "Look, Warren Buffett at 27 years old was worth 10 million dollars. At 47 years old, he was worth 75 million dollars, and at 53 years old, he was worth 350 million." And his point to me was, "You're not going to become a multimillionaire overnight. It took Warren Buffett 20 years to get from from 10 million to 75 million." Mm -hmm. And so I set those as my targets when I was 25, 26, and at 27, I was worth 10 million, uh, and I had a public company. Um, 
And I was on the American Stock Exchange by 28, 29 years old. And so I thought I arrived. The problem is my private equity group sold the company out from underneath me at 32 and I went back to zero. Mm -hmm. So I always remembered the next target was 75 million at 47 years old. And so I set that target and I said, I'm going to build a business. I'm not going to let anybody else control me. I'm going to do it without using other people's money. I'm going to re-engineer uh, what ended up being a decentralized ownership structure, uh, first of its of its kind. And today now you have blockchain and decentralized stuff. But um, and and I went and created my own business model based on the experiences I had and the research I did. And I launched that business in 2005, and I was able to build it without giving, raising any capital, without taking on any debt. Wow. And I built it with super high value in mind because I was targeting $75 million in net worth. So I always reverse engineered the business to do that. Mm. And what that taught me is a lot of people just build and build and build and they don't know what their company's worth. And then they sell, they sell, you know, I have friends that built hundred million dollar companies and sold them for 30 million. Yeah. So I knew what I needed to build. I knew what I needed to control for market share. And I did that. And then I sold my business in 2016 for 77 times EBITDA, 151 million. And I made my customers, my, my, my shareholders, and I made my employees, my shareholders, shared 35% of the economics with my employees and my customers. And, and it really was working so well when I was on, when the world was melting down in 2008 to 2010, I was on the Inc. 500 every year. I was fastest growing company. Uh, Inc. Higher Power Award. I was Entrepreneur Year twice nominated by Ernst & Young. And so my world was entirely different than the rest of the world. So I hired an engineering firm to, to, to engineer small businesses and to really understand, you know, 97% of all businesses under 100 million fail every 10 years. Wow. So I wanted to understand that marketplace, which also happens to be a, a, a $14 trillion market. And I was like, if I could fix and solve a way for these businesses to grow and scale like I'm doing, I could actually create a business that that's all I do is help them. And so that was my journey starting in 2009. And when I sold in 2016, I needed to integrate what I built for the company that bought me. And we grew them from $1 billion to $4.5 billion in 36 months by deploying these concepts into eight countries. Wow. And, now, and then my okay. confidence was pretty high about, about <laughs> what I was going to do the rest of my life. There you go. So, you know, a lot of entrepreneurs, we start our companies and we're just like, hey, I'm just going to build it and hopefully it makes money. And then hopefully it makes enough money for me to live and stuff. Do you think that that mindset that you mentioned of reverse engineering of saying, I want to build a $75 million company and then re and reverse engineering it backwards so that you knew, you know, what your end goal was. In fact, it was kind of more than a goal. You were, you were basically breaking it down in all the pieces. Do you think that mindset was really the key that more entrepreneurs need to engage in? I know it was because I built a $35 million company. I sold for <laughs> $150 million. It, For all practical purposes, that $35 million company should have sold for $20 million. Yeah, yeah. Because I knew, I knew who I was going to sell to. I had eight targeted buyers that I had put together in 10 years before I sold. I put the profile of the buyer together and I knew what they wanted if they bought me, so I built the business that would deliver that to them. And then when it came time to sell, I went out and I presented to the eight current targets in 2015. And I had eight bidders from eight presentations. So I, I, if I hadn't reverse engineered it and built into intentionality, there's no way it would have happened accidentally that way. There you go. So uh, what were some of the, uh, what, what role did, did uh, basically setting these unrealistic goals? Because some people say that it's unrealistic. You know, well, I shouldn't start a business but expecting $10 trillion right away. You know, let's, let's see what happens. What, what is uh, the advantage of setting these unrealistic goals help spark true innovation? Yeah, great question. So, so first of all, I think unrealistic isn't lunatic. Okay, so so I'm going to start a business and be worth trillions of dollars and let's see what happens. That's lunatics. Uh, unrealistic is I'm going to build something that has so much value. People are going to pay a premium for it. It's going to impact the lives of the people it, it, it's built for in order to make their life personally, professionally, financially better. And I'm going to be highly rewarded because everyone's going to realize it's a high business valued system. And it's going to involve leadership. It's going to involve operational effectiveness. It's going to involve high financial returns. It's like setting your targets because it's not a goal if it's a target. It's a target. 
Ah. And so, so I didn't set a goal. I set a target and I always work towards target where people set goals, but they don't put in place the targets to get to the goal. There you go. Uh, so, you know, it, a lot we're talking about, you know, setting these grand expectations or grand plans. Uh, what are some common misperceptions about wealth, building a companies and the nature that you did? Uh, what are some common misconceptions people have about building significant wealth or, uh, or that your book addresses? Yeah. So, so really uh, the strategy and the mindset behind, because your strategy follows your mindset. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, what you think is what you say, what you say is what you do and what you do, uh -huh. what you do is what you're known for. So the most important thing is that when my business was sold out from underneath me and I became a victim and I was talking about everything that was wrong, I was reinforcing and programming what's wrong. Mm -hmm. so when I learned how to go out 10 years and set intention statements and visualize what I wanted to accomplish or what I was going to accomplish in 10 years. So I came back to my present moment when I was under pressure. I made decisions that moved me to that 10 year goal versus decisions that kept me where I was at or took me backwards. Mm -hmm. So the mindset of the business owner, because your actions follow your thoughts. What I didn't realize and what I didn't do the first time around is I didn't control how I was thinking because I was so busy always reacting. Mm -hmm. Even though I was smart in the moment and I was busting through, ultimately it caught up to me because I didn't move intentionally towards a stated objective. I resolved fires when they came up and broke through glass ceilings and felt like Superman until it all went away because I just wasn't doing the bigger picture correctly. There you go. There you go. So um, how can entrepreneurs, you talk about this, I believe in the book, how can entrepreneurs own their weak spots and how have you done this over the years? Yeah. So I identify, you have to identify and in the book, it walks you through how to identify your weak spots. Mm -hmm. The most important thing is finding mentors, people who have actually accomplished what you said was your stated objective. So uh -huh. you're not going to figure it out generally by yourself through trial and error. And if you are, it's a slow way. So for example, this next business I launched in 2019 in collaboration with Grant Cardone, I knew exactly what I wanted to build. I told Grant the first time I sat down with him, Grant, I'm going to build a business in 60 months that's going to be doing over $125 million in revenue. It's going to be valued at over a billion dollars. And then when I do that, the next 60 months, we're going to build a billion dollar company. And this is exactly how we're going to do it. And this is how we're going to execute. Here's the people we're going to have. Here's what the profitability is going to look like. And he looked at it and he goes, man, I've heard a lot of crazy stories. But see, I wasn't just talking about it. I actually had it laid out and a pro forma, and I showed him exactly how many employees we'd have, what we'd be doing across the 10 elements, because I knew exactly what I wanted to accomplish. And that was exactly four years ago. There you go. Uh, yeah, that's a lot of people uh, that are entrepreneurs. If we have this, uh, I think Tony Robbins calls them scotomas, or other people call them scotomas, where we have these blind spots, where, as you mentioned, a weak spot, where we can't see things. Sometimes we spent so much time inside the box as, as a word of our businesses, we have a hard time seeing outside the box or we have a hard time seeing uh, new trends or new innovations that are coming from maybe competitors or the marketplace that could put us out of business uh, overnight. And that's usually, you know, where a lot of, you know, you, you have that business model that's steaming along. You're like, this works great. And then one day you wake up and <laughs> you're like, wait, the world changed. I didn't get the memo. And uh, yeah, having mentors and people that can come in, advisors that can come in, board members, et cetera, that can say, hey, here's what you're missing and be those eyes and ears for you, I think it's real important. 100%. And the thing is, is if you're not, if you don't have that mental image of what you want to accomplish in 10 years, mm -hmm. so you're just reacting to the moment, you're not you're not learning to ask the right questions because mm. you, you got two sides of the spectrum, intellectual ignorance and intellectual arrogance. Ignorance is just not knowing what you don't know. And so you learn the hard way or on the right side, it's intellectual awareness and intellectual curiosity, which is a skill set you really must develop if you want to be a successful entre entrepreneur, because it's not, no, it's not what you know that gets you in trouble. It's the 96% that you don't even know you should know it until you make a decision that you find out was the wrong one. And so if you know where you want to go, you can ask questions of the people who have been there and mm -hmm. they can fill those little gaps in about how they got there. But if you're talking to the wrong people or you're pulling P O L L I N G, what should I do? What do you think I ought to do? And you're asking your lawyers and your accountants who've never done it. And you're asking your employees who've never done it and who already feel overwhelmed. And you're asking your spouse who feels like you're never home enough already. It's like, 
all the data and information isn't pulling you to target. It's, it's literally pulling you off target. So I always say to people, look, whatever you want to accomplish, find the living, breathing example, ingratiate yourself to them, find out how they did it and use the resources that they will point you to so that you can move into that clear picture you have for yourself for the, and make sure you bring everybody along with you because nothing great has ever been built without a team working with you to do it. There you go. It's the difference between hunting around for the answer in, in the dark as opposed to finding somebody who's got a, who's got a candlelight. hundred <laughs> percent. I mean, and, and, and I've proven this with Grant because our business in four years from startup, not using any capital to start it, not taking on any debt. We're in our fourth year this year. This year we'll do 135 million in revenue. We'll make $45 wow. million dollars of EBITDA. Last year we did 83 with 31 million of EBITDA. I publish our financial results and show my clients when they come through our system so they can see from day one revenue all the way up to what we did last month. We've launched 10X Health, which is a new format business. When we bought that business from Gary Brecka, he was doing a few million dollars a year two years ago. We'll do 60, 70 million this year wow. and, and probably 125 to 150 million next year. So we have 2.4 billion of businesses of 10X business owners in our system that we're actively managing their business. And we have businesses going from two or 3 million to 30, 40, 50 million within two years. So congratulations, man. It, it, it's, we've proven it works. Now you just have to have an open mind to say you want to do it. And you got to be willing to accept the responsibilities and the changes necessary to attain that kind of success. There you go. I always tell my nephew, uh, cause he's young and, uh, I, I don't want him to lock into, um, uh, his thinking and I, and try to grow with expansive thinking and thinking, you know, beyond the, uh, basically I give him three principles. There's the things, you know, there's the things, you know, you don't know. And the most important things to try and figure out are the things you don't know. You don't know, because those are the ones that usually come at you. And then those are the ones you usually need to know to build yourself and get to the next level. And then that, that's literally 96%. The mm -hmm. things you know, you know, is 2%. The things you know, you don't know is 2%. And then you got to eat the other 90% as you go uh, along. Yeah. The whole world is, is out there. And, and, uh, and, and sometimes, I mean, that, that's where stuff comes out of you, the blue to teach us some lessons in life. You can believe on why that happens, but you know, life is a survival game. It's uh, there's darts and arrows going everywhere and you're going to catch them. And, uh, there you go. Uh, so what advice would you give to entrepreneurs who are just starting out and uh, aspire to achieve a nine figure net worth? Yeah. So, so one thing, uh, early on, um, I developed phenomenal sales skills and I would say to any entrepreneur, you need to develop remarkable sales skills because you're always going to be selling either why someone should join your team, why somebody should spend money with you, why somebody might invest money with you, why somebody might sell their business to you. Like if you don't master your ability to communicate and persuade people to make a good decision, you're always going to struggle. And remember 83% of all businesses were founded. If they're under a hundred million, they were founded by technicians who are good at something. So they started their business, but they're not intentionally developing their sales skills. So I say, number one is your ability to communicate and persuade. Number two is learning the financial algorithm to successfully build a business because the chief complaint for why businesses 97% go out of business is not no demand for product or service, can't hire any good people and don't have the financial resources. So if those are the three chief complaints, make sure whatever you're doing has been proven in the marketplace. There's no point in reinventing something. That's Secondly, true understand that your communication skills will dictate your ability to lead and guide other people. And you can't build anything big without other people. And then the third thing is simply understanding how money works and how it's supposed to fuel the business so that you don't make all the mistakes that people make that put them out of business when they actually have a, they've already proven there's demand for product or service. They've already got a team, but then they make the financial mistakes. So solve those three problems and you're going to have a high probability of success. Boom. There's a formula for you. That's awesome. Uh, so you're, you've, you, your collaboration with Grant Cardone, everybody's familiar with uh, Grant Cardone and yourself and, and the 10X program. Uh, uh, well, how did you meet Grant Cardone? How did you get involved with, uh, you know, build the 10X brand? Great question. So after I sold my business to a billion dollar company, we took them to four and a half billion in 36 months and I was done for that project. So 
The next iteration was taking all the research for 10 years, all the business systems and processes and technologies that I created, and it was to find a way to go to the marketplace to do what I'm doing today. And my wife, which is why you want to be surrounded by great people, suggested I look at some of the social media influencers that had legitimate businesses associated with their influence. Mm -hmm. So we made a list. We went through the whole list. And, and when we came across Grant Cardone, to be honest, I didn't like Grant at first. She showed me a video. He was running around <laughs> with a money gun and a hat sideways doing his hey, hey, hey thing. And I was like, man, this can't be legit. But she stayed on me, uh, got me to read his book. Uh, then I read his next book and his next book. And then we made the decision to go to GrowthCon in 2019 to see what this was about. Mm -hmm. And no one knew us. We didn't know them. And we went for five specific things we were looking for. One, does Grant and Elena really work in the business together? Because my wife and I wanted to do something together. Two, the audience that he has is a kind of audience that we can help with everything that I had been researching and studying because we didn't know. The third, do we have products and services that would complement his products and services or conflict against? Mm -hmm. The fourth was, is, 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 is he a legit guy? Like, like, is he, or is he just like popping in and doing the entry and then everybody else behind him is, is doing their thing. So is he mm -hmm. actively involved in the business? And then the fifth most important is I had already accomplished. Remember my target was 10 million at 27, 75 million at 47 and 350, 350 million by 53. Well, I was 51 and a half years old. And so I had no visibility in how to create an extra $300 million or $275 million in net worth in, in two years. Mm -hmm. So the question I had is, is he really successful enough that if I could compliment what he was doing by helping me, could we create a $350 million net worth uh -huh. for me? And I'm proud to say that, that, that he hit all five of those boxes in the first half of the first day of growth con. And it really helps to have friends because John Maxwell was a featured speaker there. Oh yeah. And John and I are very close and I helped him grow his business in 2012 and 13. So he pulled Grant aside and pointed at us and he said, Hey, if you get a chance to meet those two people, anything that guy tells you is the truth. So when I met Grant, he's like, you came with some high regard from John Maxwell. Mm -hmm. And that's, was the start of our relationship. And I told him I was there to see if we'd make good partners or not. And, and that's how we became partners. That's awesome. John Maxwell wrote some great, uh, a lot of, a lot of great books on leadership. I mean, just an endless amount of books that I've consumed. Number one then, authority. Yep. And then he did your forward, and I think you're part of his publishing uh, branch. That's correct. And yeah. and he's a dear friend, phenomenal mentor. He was actually at my book release to talk about what he's watched me build in three separate companies, and what I did to help him in his company to validate that what I wrote in this book is is true. There you go. Partnering up with Grant Cardone, uh, uh, what are some advice you can give to entrepreneurs who are looking to form successful business partnerships? Because it's hard. <laughs> it's hard working with partners sometimes, and sometimes it doesn't work out too well. Yeah, well, in my book, I even put my intention statements in it. And one of my intention statements is to be the best partner anybody could ever have. So wow. partnerships work when both partners are committed to each other and not self-committed. Um so the most important thing in a partnership, I, I do believe collaboration is the highest form of currency. Most mm -hmm. people want to go it alone and they want to keep everything themselves. And, and then when they do partner, it's usually because they want somebody to pick up the slack and, and do the things they don't want to do. But mm -hmm. then they need to be a good partner on their side of the equation and do exactly the same for that partner. So what allows partnerships? And I work in turnarounds. This is my expertise. And a lot of them have partnership breakups and, or spousal breakups. It's important to remember out of out of the 31 and a half million businesses under 100 million, it's important to remember that 93% of those businesses under 100 million, 93% of 31 million businesses have family involved. Wow. So, so when the partnership, if it's a family partnership, it really goes bad if they break yeah. up, right? Yeah. So picking a good partner is all centered around what are your skills, what are your contributions, what are your attributes, what are your competencies, and what are you going to deliver to the business? And it needs to complement, not conflict with a partner. And then it adds value and compounds and accelerates growth. But most people form partnerships because of what they don't want to do, hoping the other partner is going to do that, and then neither partner do it. Because like attracts like. I think marriages start that way sometimes. Exactly. I don't know. 
I could be wrong, uh, but uh, yeah, it, it, I think people do. Uh, you know, it, peop, and people don't do what you call uh, talked about early in the show: reverse engineer their building, uh, it, their business. You know, do I want to be doing business with this person 10, 20 years from now? Uh, what what might change? What what goals might change? Um, I think I think some people need to also take an attitude that I seem to counsel a lot of people on. It's like, hey, I want to, you know, I want to do business with my friends or wife or husband, whatever. And I'm like, do you really need to make them, uh, you know, give them stock and make them a part of the company? Can you just hire them as an employees? Like, you don't need to give up 50% of your company necessarily. Maybe you should just make them an employee with a, maybe a partnership stock option, you know, something where they can eventually get ownership, but at least proving that they can, you know, they're going to, they're actually going to hold up their end of the thing in a perform a sort of way. What great advice. And, and, in all my deals, um, I structure earn in equity vesting structures. So no one would ever get it unless they hit the target that they agreed before we hired them that they were responsible for. And they saw through the success of that target being hit. And then they would vest equity uh, in the business. Most equity structures are structured incorrectly because most lawyers don't know how to build businesses and they don't know exactly how to protect their clients. So they just do general partnership agreements. Too many entrepreneurs are so frustrated and fearful. They give equity to people hoping that incense them and it doesn't. And it usually creates a catastrophic event with the equity structure of the business down the road. If they pull through and make it work, then they're dragging a partner along all the way who's getting paid and getting some of the upside for doing nothing. So it's just really, uh, th but this is all the practice of practicing, right? And I think that the, the, the number one thing you said when you said there's the, the, the knowing what you don't know. And, and that's the majority of every decision a business owner needs to make because building a business by nature of not have done it, doing it before you're doing it through trial and error. And so it really is, did this work or not work? And then this follow-up question is it probably could have worked, but I didn't execute it right. And so you know, the stats show this. Part of the engineering I did was break points. Where do businesses break and fail? 3% of the 97 or of the 100% succeeded. What did they do differently at what points in time than the 97%? What were those behavioral or those engagements or those activities? And we documented that. So what we know is there's 10 elements to growing and scaling a business to 125 million from startup. Mm -hmm. Those 10 elements have principal 76 principles underneath them and under the 76 principles there's 250 individual unique things that need to be in place from startup to 125 million that if you bypass those there are natural places where your business will break because the infrastructure the structure is not strong enough there you go infrastructure is everything uh so what are some of the future plans or aspirations do you have in your collaboration with uh grant cardone and, uh, you know, using the book to um, uh, take it to the next level. Yeah, great question. So uh, we are building this. Cardo Ventures is an operating education operating company that has a venture component to it. So right now we, we've gone from startup to over 2.3 billion in businesses. We're either educating, we're engineering, we're managing or we're partnering with. And now we're, we're launching Cardone Equity Group, mm -hmm. which is our private equity group to complement Cardone uh, Cardone Capital. Mm -hmm. So Grant raises crowdfunding to buy real estate. We're going to be raising capital to co-acquire businesses with those businesses we've engineered with business owners who have oh. demonstrated their ability to operate. And we're starting to target very specific verticals. The first mm -hmm. one we rolled out was 10X Health Format. Mm -hmm. Now we're rolling out 10X HVAC, 10X Pools and Spa, 10X Farms and right. Ranches, uh, 10X Roofing, um, 10x cybersecurity, 10x mm -hmm. dental. We've got 10 different specific formats by vertical rolling out right now. And our objective is to build a $10 billion portfolio uh, where Grant and I are in partnership or our investors are in partnership with us with all those entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And then Grant's going to build Cardone Capital to, to 10 billion. And that's a $20 billion venture equity group that has real estate assets, business assets, and an education company. And then as the basis of that, we're going to paper some of that and bring outside investors into it, and we'll take it to $50 billion. Wow. You guys have a vision for this that's just amazing and astounding, very big. 
well, my partner is the king of big. That's the whole thesis <laughs> of the 10X rule. And since partnering with him, I've thought a lot bigger, but but then people always challenge and say, yeah, but it's pie, it's pie in the sky. But I just want to remind them that when I met Grant four years ago, he had raised $250 million in crowdfunding dollars and bought $900 million of real estate. And that was the most crowdfunding dollars ever raised by anybody on the planet. Fast forward four and a half years, we now have $5.5 billion in real estate and over $1.3 billion raised in crowdfunding. Wow. Grant's business was $50 million in revenue and the training business it, this year will be $150 million. My business was non-existent four and a half years ago. This year, I'll do $135 million. And I believe with all our companies and the operating companies together, we're approaching almost $700 million of revenue this year. And I think that will 10X in the next 60 months. Wow. Uh, they're just proof positive of the 10X mindset. Let me ask you, this is one of my final questions. Uh, uh, on a synergy of mindsets, how does your nine-figure mindset complement or differ from Grant Cardone's 10X philosophy? Probably a lot of 10X fans out there in the marketplace are going, are these two different or are they the same? Yeah, well, nine figure can go up to nine hundred ninety nine million point ninety nine cents. <laughs> so, so look, the 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 this book was written because John Maxwell said if you don't get this book out, because I the manuscript for this book he looked at it in two thousand twelve because I started in two thousand ten, but I never really felt like I had arrived enough to be an example that I was entitled to write a book. So this book was written. Because John said, if you don't write this book, then your next book, which will be the 10 figure mindset, won't make sense because <laughs> because I'm already on my way of going to a billion dollars in net worth just in the last four years. And I hit my 350 target this last year working with Grant. So so the point here is um, I needed to put out nine figure mindset, how to go from zero to 100 million. Now, Grant would tell you if you're making a million dollars. You should 10x that thinking, which takes you to 10 million. And then when you make 10 million, you got to 10x it again, which takes you to 100 million. All this book does is tell tells you how I went from no net worth to 10 million in net worth to 100 million in net worth. So the next book can explain the principles of the 10x rule and how I went from 100 million in net worth in, in a third of the time to a billion dollars in net worth, because that is the premise of the 10x rule. And then the next is the 10 billion. And, and, and that is what Grant's saying. And what I want to do is document my live transformation through those cycles so people can see to get to 100 million, you first got to get to a million, then you get to 10 million, then you get to 100 million, then you go to a billion. There you go. And then your next book will have to be what, uh, 10 or 12 uh, million dollar mindset or eight? eight. No, it'll be a billion dollar mindset. <laughs> yeah, 10 or 12. <laughs> there you it'll go. be 10 billion dollar mindset. Yeah, there you go. Then trillion dollars, you know, you just be yeah. uh, going you against Apple. Going. You know, it's laughable. It is laughable. But look, um, the fact is, is that I sit there with people that are worth a hundred billion or a hundred and fifty billion. I mm -hmm. broke bread and had wine with some of those people. So the truth is, uh, Jeff Bezos, perfect example. What was? What if he hit a billion dollar mindset and stopped? Mm -hmm. You know, he's several hundred billion mindset, Bill Gates. I mean, there's people that have done it and I always have this attitude. If one did it, other people can do it. But for certainty, if multiple people did it, then anybody can do it. That's true. And there are multiple people who have done it. There you go. Uh, so give us your final pitch out, uh, Brandon, on people to order up the book, uh, get involved with your services, website, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, look, if you want to 10X your, your, your personal, professional, financial life, if you want a roadmap, a blueprint on how somebody has done it, because that was a void, I had to go figure out different mentors at different points in time. So this book is really me engineering how a 2.4 GPA got to a net worth of 100 million. But what's interesting is that that that's where it left off in this book, 2019-20, where I started with Grant. But in the last four years, I've increased my net worth to over 350 million. And so the next book will be coming out and explaining that. And, and I think I'm just trying to document in real time exactly how I identified those gaps in my life, found mentors to fill those gaps in my life, set targets, took action and broke through as a person who has voted least likely to succeed, didn't go to college, had a low GPA and sucked at most subjects in school. So if I can do that from a little town in Corvallis, Oregon, I promise you anybody that wants to do it can do it. There you go. Give us your dot coms, Brandon, so people can. Uh... Yes. So look, this is really simple. If you want the book, there's some free content. It's nine figure 
mindset.com. And then I have a thousand dollars of free content associated with it or go to Amazon and just order it. Um, or go to bdawson.com. That's just my personal site that you can find everything or go to cardonventures.com or go to at Brandon M. Dawson on Instagram. You can find me all those different places or go to grantcardone.com if you can't remember any of those. There you go. People have loved the show, man. They've loved having you on the show. Thank you very much, Brandon, for coming on. We really appreciate it. Appreciate you inviting me on your show. I really respect what you do for entrepreneurs and the message you spread to, to people who are looking to grow and scale. Thank you, and you as well. Uh, thanks to my audience for tuning in. Order up the book wherever fine books are sold. Remember, stay out of those alleyway bookstores. They can be dangerous. Uh, Nine-figure mindset. How to go from zero to over $100 million in net worth. Uh, available September 19th, 2023 by Brandon Dawson. Uh, thanks to our audience for tuning in. Go to goodreads.com, for says Chris Foss, linkedin.com, for says Chris Foss. Subscribe to the big LinkedIn newsletter, the 130,000 LinkedIn group over there, youtube.com, for says Chris Foss. Chris Foss, one of the TikTokity, and Chris Foss, Facebook.com. Be good to each other. Stay safe, and we'll see you guys next time.